Mexico World yeah. Police is your theme. It didn't happen. Can you give us a hint? They, it will have nothing to do with Canadians. Okay. Um, well, most of them. Well, kind of. Maybe it will. Mm. No, I won't have anything. What's the deal with that, Tom? Are you, just, are you asking for these Canadians to pick them off, or what? are you just taking uh, the No, to pick I mean, off? well, first of all, I, I'm not sure. You guys are media, right? I'm pretty sure uh, Carmont is French. Right. Uh, right. He's but a transplanted I, Canadian. So, uh, what does it take to be a transplanted Canadian? How long do you have to be here? Train in a couple of oh, years. Oh, you just I have guess. to train here? A couple oh, years. Okay. All right. Well, I guess he's Canadian then. Uh, no, I didn't ask. Um, well, actually, I did ask for the fight. There was a list of names I gave. He was one of them. Um, you know, he's on a really, really good win streak. It has nothing to do with him being Canadian. I love the Canadian fans. Uh, you know, I love Canadian bacon. I love, I love it all. I love Tim Hortons more than anything. So. What do you, you know, can you give your sort of assessment on Paramount so far? Obviously, he's only a couple of fights on two as you can see from there. He looked pretty impressive so far. Still, a lot of people look at him as sort of a raw talent. You know, he's 30 years old. Yeah, uh, well, you know, in his three performances so far in the UFC, uh, he's looked impressive. Uh, I have more UFC wins than he has UFC fights, so I have more impressive performances than he does in the UFC, so how come no one's asking me about that? <laughs> Everybody's asking him about, uh, about the impressive performances he's had so far. I have more wins than he does. You know, he might be on an eight-fight win streak, but not all of that's been inside the UFC. You know, there's no telling some of these other guys that he fought who they are. They could have been garbage men in their spare time or, or guys, you know, cleaning the bathroom at the, um, you know, at the local second cup. So there's no way to tell who these guys were that he was fighting. Um, you know, and th this, is, uh, this is a chance for me to go out there and, you know, show that, uh, you know, I belong in the upper echelon of guys here in the UFC at middleweight. Uh, barring a few mistakes or, or bumps in the road I've had along the way, I feel great about this fight. And uh, I feel like this is my time to shine, not his. So do you think you're the most technically skilled opponent that Carmont has faced so far? No. No, I wouldn't say I'm technically skilled at all. Uh, but last time I checked, it's not like a kata competition. You know, it's a fight. Um, I'm gonna go after him. I'm gonna make him uncomfortable. I'm gonna get in his face. I'm gonna walk out. Will your experience make a difference? Will you be able to, you know? Not. I, I don't think experience, as far as uh, being in fights. There's, you know, he's got twice as many fights as I have. It just so happens I have, I guess, more big fight but experience. But you've got the big fight the experience and the UFC experience. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's gonna matter. I think I could have three or four fights in the UFC and it wouldn't matter. Uh, I'm still going to go after him, I'm still going to take him out. Tom, how important was the bonus check you won last time? I understand that uh, you had moved camps and mm -hmm. things were pretty tight before that. What was life like before that and how did the bonus check help? Uh, it helped a lot. Uh, I relocated from Florida to the Northeast uh, where the cost of living is a lot higher. Um, you know, and I, I still, I did a better job of saving a bunch of money from that bonus check. Uh, you know, I didn't bank on getting it. I didn't bank on walking out with that, that chunk of cash. So, you know, it really helped me out a lot and uh, has allowed me to really focus on training and not have to worry about um, other aspects of life and be, and be stressed out about that. Uh, you know, the fact that we're fighting here in Canada is kind of setting me back a little bit because the exchange rate's not in my favor anymore. But, uh, you know, th that big chunk of money always helps. Did you bring the Depends across the border? <laughs> Uh, no, I did not. Um, I actually went to the store yesterday to buy them, and the store, this is a true story, the store did not have a bathroom in it. So I'm asking where a bathroom is as I'm at the, at, at the counter checking out, getting a pair of Depends, and I had to urinate so bad that I started peeing in my pants. So it was uh, quite an interesting time for me yesterday. That's probably too much information. Well, hey. You, know. <laughs> you got the Depends now. Sorry, yeah. I have them now. And, uh, Seth Petrozelli tested them out, so they work great. Uh, so he's planning on wearing them at the uh, after fight party on Saturday night and not having to leave his seat. And this was his idea? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, especially if there's any people that are uh, Japanese and offended by it. 100% uh, it was his idea. Uh, otherwise, if you enjoyed it, you can direct all those comments towards me. Have you learned some more French since that video you put online huh. last week? No, I think I've forgotten <laughs> more of it than, than I even had then. Um, you know, I took French in school for five years, and uh, without somebody to practice it with or you know go over it with on a daily basis, it just it went right out the window. So, so you're not gonna have some French if you win with Joe Rogan in the <laughs> no. The extent of it, I think, is gonna be maybe hearing the corner uh, yelling out like un un deux or <laughs> un deux trois if, when they're calling out combinations. Um, you know, I might be able to understand that, but other than that, I think I'm in trouble when it comes to French. Who are you picking in the main event? What's your take on that fight? Uh, I'm picking St. Pierre. I think he's going to just be able to control Condit. Uh, if you look at some of Condit's tougher fights, 
Um, you know, he had a tough time with Ellen Berger, uh, who's you know a great wrestler, uh, as well as has knockout power. Uh, and he was getting kind of controlled by Rory McDonald. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, Faraz, George, and those guys have looked at the tape of that uh, and come up with a pretty good game plan on a way to control him. I think it'll be a five-round decision. I, I don't see a finish uh, unless it comes from Condit. But, you know, there, there's no way to tell. But I think St. Pierre will walk out with a decision victory. Now, everyone's been speculating about George and Anderson Silva. Do you think that that's the fight that you'd like to see next? Or would, do you no. think Anderson Silva still has got work in middleweight to do against guys like you and Carmont? No, I think that uh, I don't want to see the fight with Anderson Silva and George. I think there's just, uh, such a pronounced size difference. Maybe not in weight, but in actual like, physical size. Uh, I think Silva and John Jones is the fight that needs to happen if you're going to make a, uh, a cross weight fight. Or um, I think it should definitely be Jones and uh, Jones and Silva rather than Silva and Sandy here. To me, it seems like if Silva, it's gonna sound bad. I'm gonna say, uh, like it seems like he's picking on George. You know, not just based on size, like a bigger guy picking on a smaller guy rather than, uh, you know, him and John Jones are kind of comparable in size in a way, uh, more so at least than St. Pierre and Silva. So that's not a fight that I personally want to see. I know a lot of fans do, just to see you walk out with the win, but I'm not one Thomas, since Francis Clement's only fought three times in the UFC, do you feel like you have enough to look at in terms of like the footage to really kind of have a good grasp of what he does? Like, yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, even though he only has three fights in the UFC, he's got a bunch of fights outside of it. And the three performances he's, he's had in the UFC, they've all been uh, at least gone into the second round. So, you know, you can only... You can draw inferences from only so much video uh, until you're in there, but it seems like pretty consistent in the stuff that he does in those three fights that I don't think in the past three or four months that something's gonna drastically have changed. Uh, if you look at somebody's like past performances, their recent performances, that's usually a, a dictator of how they're gonna perform in the future. Uh, and I think that's gonna hold true with Armand. Now maybe he'll come out there and start doing capoeira or uh, tai bow or something and throw me off for a loop. Uh, but you know, I think I've got enough video on him to really be comfortable on this fight. But, but Francis need... is one of the biggest guys in the division. Yeah. How do you cope with someone that size? And is it a good indicator of how you fare against him as a He's you know, also big for yeah, I mean, he's big for the division, but uh, the last guy I fought, Jason McDonald, was six foot three. Carmont's six foot three. Uh, I fought CB Dalloway, he's like six two. Uh, so I've never really been in a fight where I have a distinct size advantage. So this is no different. Um, you know, I, just because he has a size, size advantage doesn't mean he's stronger than me. Uh, it doesn't mean he's going to be able to use leverage better than me. Uh, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Uh, I know he's got really big arms, uh, but it looks to me like he has kind of skinny legs. Uh, I kind of have the opposite build. Kind of like uh, a T-Rex. I wouldn't say that. No, he doesn't have short arms. Just, just <laughs> you know, just big. Um, so, you know, each body type lends itself to different advantages and disadvantages. I'm not worried about the fact that he's, that he's, uh, that he's taller than me and, and quote unquote bigger than me. I mean, my head is probably twice the size of his, so you could say that I'm bigger than him. Yeah. <laughs> What's his best attribute as far as what you've seen? Uh, my guess is that he's really, really strong. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. I've seen some things in his fights where he made mistakes uh, in the fight and guys weren't able to capitalize and that could be due to strength but he's also really good on the flip side of just capitalizing on others mistakes um, it seems to me like other guys maybe uh, push the pace and, and go for something and he's able to stifle it or, or work around it and capitalize on what they did wrong rather than him like overpowering them and doing something right so uh, for me you know the key is to minimize mistakes and, and just fight my game and, and get the win there are you talks of the UFC opening up to women fighters and Ronda Rousey coming up. Yep. What's your take on that? Um, that's the uh, that's a fight that I'd like to have, uh, basically because it would you know she's got a lot of hype behind her. It would put me on the map. So uh, <laughs> yeah, what's you know, what do you think of women in the, in the UFC? Uh, I think, I think it, yeah, it's fine. Uh, you know, it doesn't bother me at all. I, I wouldn't want to fight a woman, but that's got nothing to do with the fact that uh, I don't think that they should fight. I mean, it's got something to do with the fact that I don't want to see a 185-pound woman in uh, a sports bra and, and shorts <laughs> for the most part. So, um, you know, as long as I keep it in the lower weights, I'm more than happy to watch. <laughs> do you think our popularity could benefit the UFC at some point? Or? That, I'm sorry? Ronda Rousey's popularity could benefit the UFC, I think? Uh, yeah, I'm sure it will. She's got a lot of hype behind her. She's very marketable. She was, you know, in the Olympics, so she has a past pedigree. Um, you know, I think it's a good move for both sides.